Hi, this is your gold silver market update for Thursday, March 12th, 2020, and the coronavirus deflation contagion continues. There was a market sell off today. It's a bloodbath. Uh, this screenshot here the Dow is down 9%. And right when the market opened, uh, there was a gap down that caused the uh, market circuit breakers to blow. Now, these aren't electrical circuit breakers. What this is is programming. If the market drops by 7%, trading is halted for 15 minutes. That's when the circuit breakers blow. Trading is halted for 15 minutes. Hopefully, people calm down. Trading continues. If it drops more to a total of uh, minus 13%, the breakers blow again and there's a 15 minute pause and then trading continues. If it falls all the way to minus 20%, they stop trading for the rest of the day, that's it. So that's how the circuit breakers work. And what happened is the circuit breakers were triggered for the second time this week. And it happened on a gap down. Basically a gap down is when you've got a trading range from the previous day and then the next day they normally opens up somewhere within that trading range and that sets a new trading range and they step down or step up whichever whichever direction the market is going but sometimes there's this big gap in the chart it gaps down and opens up way down here and sets a brand new trading range well that gap down caused the markets to blow the circuit breakers right at the beginning of the day uh, and we're, we're really in some historic times right now. Stuff is just happening so fast. So the markets were down more than 2,000 points at this point, and this was early on in trading. Uh, so let's go right on to the precious metals, and both gold and silver are down again today. And I look at this like the gift from God. If you look at the gold-silver ratio, it's still near up, one, uh, up near 100. Uh, and gold and silver are falling uh, at a rate that is much, much, much less than the markets. So they're showing strength, but I do expect a little bit further pullback, I'm hoping for it, before they take off for the moon. So this is like the gift from God. It's being able to buy redemption before the sentence. <laughs> and, you know, the sentence for uh, uh, the economy and the markets, this is going to be pretty brutal. Uh, anyway, take a look down here in our news and you see this Bazooka article. Fed unleashes $4 trillion in repo bailouts and expands not QE to QE4. And what we have here is uh, after increasing its repo facility twice this week. So it started the week at $100 billion per day of uh, open market operations offered, repurchase agreements offered to 150 billion and then to 175 billion per day but these are overnights so they uh, a entity that's in trouble pledges a security to the federal reserve federal reserve creates a bunch of currency and gives it to them in exchange for that asset and but in the contract the seller of the asset has to repurchase it the next day when that currency that the federal reserve uh, created comes back into the black hole that is the Federal Reserve's checkbook, their checking account, it vanishes. So they create currency one day, they destroy it the next. However, if you take a look at this, uh, uh, and per day and adding a new one month term repo facility. So whatever currency they create on those one months stays out there for an entire month. And all of, most of these get rolled over when they expire. Uh, the New York Fed just stunned the markets and fired its biggest bazooka since the Lehman Brothers crisis. Uh, not coincidentally, just moments before today's 30-year Treasury auction, because if the uh, Treasury auction fails, if you don't, uh, if they have a Treasury auction and they're unable to auction all of the 30-year Treasuries that they're offering, it would mean game over. Uh, by announcing a total of one trillion in three month repos. So this is a trillion dollars that they're going to create that stays out there for three months. $500 billion today, $500 billion tomorrow, as well as an additional 500 billion in one month repos offered weekly, uh, which means up to $3 trillion cumulative repo, repos if fully allotted, maybe online by the end of this month. And then, it says, but wait, there's more. Sounds like a steak knife commercial to me. 
because the Fed also finally threw in the towel on the semantics between uh, what it was calling uh, QE and not QE, uh, when it announced it would start purchasing treasuries as part of permanent open market operations. Repurchase agreements are temporary open market operations. Permanent open market rate operations, the entity that's doing the sale of the asset to the Federal Reserve doesn't make a contract or a pledge to say, yes, we will buy this back on a certain date and give you the cash back that you just created. So this is permanent open market operations, which means QE is on again there. But I'll have some more comments on QE uh, soon because most people do not understand QE. But for some context on how these temporary open market operations, the repurchase agreements, uh, compares to what they've been doing, assuming the full allotment is taken up, the two $500 billion repos, this is what it's going to look like. This is what they were doing, and then this is what they will do in just a two-month, uh, two-day period. Uh, add that one trillion dollars to the currency supply. But the bazooka. This is the same article, uh, and it goes on uh, to talk about the the trading desk uh, of new monthly scheduled treasury operations, and that from March 13th, so tomorrow until April 13th. The desk will conduct purchases across a broad range of maturities. Today, March 12th, the desk will offer 500 billion in three month repurchase agreements. So that's three, that's half a trillion that stays out there for three months. Tomorrow, the desk will offer a further half trillion dollars in three month repos. So there's a trillion dollars that stay, that they've added to the currency supply that will stay out there for three months and then three and one month operations for 500 billion will be offered on a weekly basis for the remainder of the monthly schedule. So when you add this together, you can get a total of four trillion. So, and that's in, this is in addition to their 175 billion in overnight repos and at least 45 billion in two week term repos. Uh, these changes have been made to address the highly unusual disruptions in, the tre in treasury financing markets associated with the coronavirus outbreak. So basically, they're in some deep doo-doo and they're creating tons of currency to overcome it. On the radar, Dan Tapiero says uh, he doesn't ever recall seeing a one on this indicator and neither do I, Dan. This is like, I, this is history being made. This is a first. This is the greed fear index, and it's made up by measuring uh, some uh, options spreads and some uh, and the volatility index and so on. I can't remember all of the components that go into this index, but it's a measure of how greedy investors are and how fearful they are. And right now, it has never been down at this uh, extreme. Today would seem an appropriate time for the Fed to Fed to cut funds rate to zero. Uh, what could be holding Powell back? How is caution warranted now? Welcome, the 708 new subscribers since yesterday. Thank you very much for joining us. Now on to the chart of the day, and this is a table, not a chart, but it's the performance of the S&P 500 and gold in the biggest drawdowns of the stock market. And so what you see here are different drawdowns in different time periods of almost 20%, this is a third. Uh, this is uh, almost 20%. This is almost 50%. 56.8%, 57%. And this is almost 20%. In each one of these instances, gold made significant gains, 25 one time and 53% another time during these market panics. So there's uh, gold is take gold and silver are taking this dip. It's like the gift from God, last opportunity, and then they will most likely, just like almost all other times in history, turn around and just uh, surprise the hell out of everyone. So some viewer feedback. Uh, this is all about the deflation virus, the video I did yesterday. Uh, this is from Chris C. Love your work, Mike. Uh, you give it. You give it to us like it is. No BS, just reliable facts based on history. Good luck filling up your silver vault. I think uh, we'll get one day to do it, and it's coming extremely soon. What do you think? If silver goes to 14, will it, be the, will it last more than one day? To clarify, what I mean is, 
it would reach $14 due to margin calls on a 20% uh, drop down, market drawdown day. Uh, so probably the next day it would soar. Uh, we'll, have, <clears throat> we'll, have to ready, we'll have to ready to snap it up. Uh, it, it's not 2008 anymore. Boy, could I, I, I couldn't agree more with, the, with what he's saying here. Everything will happen at lightning speed people have their phones in their hand. You know, um, uh, it's, it's an extremely different world today. Everything happens at lightning speed. And this whole thing is gonna play out very fast. And you know, I think it was Doug Casey that say, you know, uh, sometimes these emergencies play out very, very, very slowly until the day they don't. And then they happen very fast. And I believe that's what's happening right now. Uh, Paul Thompson says, Hi Mike, thanks for the great enlightening work. Could you provide some insight into gold and silver mining shares? You had mentioned previously that you were investing in the mining shares. Do you see these shares following gold and silver? Well, I've got two answers on this. No, I don't see them following gold and silver and we'll get back to that in a moment. And I've only currently got one investment in uh, mining shares and it's actually not mining shares, it's an explorer and it was a private placement. And in a private placement, you're getting in sort of on the ground floor. And, uh, but it's a very risky move because explorers uh, sometimes come up with nothing and you lose everything. But if they make a hit, then the gains can be absolutely spectacular. So I threw a little bit of gambling money at this. I did, it isn't mining shares, it's, a, it's shares in an explorer and it was a private placement uh, before it's offered uh, to the public or anything. I, these may never be offered to the public. I don't know. It's a private uh, venture at this point. Do you see these shares following gold and silver? I don't see the mining shares following gold and silver based on history. If you take a look at the, uh, the 1970s bull market, uh, when gold went in from uh, the end of 76 to January 1980, when gold went from uh, just uh, $100 up to $850, it blew the doors off the mining shares. The mining shares did not keep up. If you, if you look at the Barron's Gold Mining Index versus gold, you will see that when gold was in its bull market, the mining shares lagged big time. And then when gold peaked, it, did a, it hit 850 in January 1980, it fell back to below uh, $500 and then it had a dead cat bounce up to just above $700, like $730 or $750. And on that dead cat bounce, that's when the mining shares just absolutely exploded and blew the doors off of, off of physical gold. What it was is everybody thought that physical gold was going to be setting some new high. And so everybody's piling into mining shares, chasing yesterday's news. I absolutely expect the exact same thing to happen again. So I don't believe the mining shares are going to keep up with physical gold and silver. And if you uh, buy silver, you're buying leverage to gold because there will come a day where the gold-silver ratio does a reversion. Right now we're at one extreme. So you can get leverage to gold and you can swap this for gold and then swap your gold for uh, something like real estate or stocks when they're severely, severely undervalued but I wouldn't do be, be too quick on it because what I see coming this time isn't just a recession, this is a depression. The quote of the day. First, please, if you get anything from this, subscribe to our channel and let me send you a free copy of my book because you know basically I outlined all of this many, many years ago and then I updated this in 2015. But in, tw in 2007, I had, I had said how this is going to play out Half of it played out, then Ben Bernanke uh, created all this currency, dropped in interest rates to zero. Now the other half is playing out. And that's what I said in my book, that it would be a roller coaster crash with the threat of deflation in 2008 and then real deflation happening uh, in, in the final crash, which we're going through now, that'll then turn into a hyperinflation because the Fed will create too much currency, which you've seen them start today, uh, they'll create too much currency, uh, but the public will just keep on sucking this up because the baby boomers are scared and they're, they're seeing their retirements evaporate at this point. 
and they're going to suck all this currency up and save it until they get enough to where they feel like they're safe. They've got enough in their retirement account for the rest of their lives, nothing to worry about. And so now it's time to go out and buy that new SUV that I deserve or that new big screen TV I deserve. And at that point, when it comes out of hiding, we're going to see an inflationary boom. And you need to watch episode seven of Hidden Secrets of Money to understand that. So the quote of the day, Thomas Jefferson, paper money is liable to be abused. It has been, is, and forever will be abused in every country in which it is permitted. Thank you very much, Thomas Jefferson. And I hope you got something from this. And, and if you did, hit that like button. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.